Luigi's Mansion walkthrough. This is floor B2. Yes, we're going way down. We're not going up, we're going way down to the basement. And below the basement that we've already been in, where I think Egad currently has his laboratory. But anyway, this is probably my least favorite level, and there's not really a good reason for that. I just don't like it that much. The boss fight, I think I fail pretty badly on. I still managed to beat him without dying, but uh, <laughs> I have a really hard time. Uh, I had a really hard time fighting him when I was recording this walkthrough for some strange reason. And then on top of that, the rest of the level is just pretty convoluted and kind of annoying. And we're, this is not the last time we're going to see this level. We're going to have to come back here in the future. Spoiler alert. But here's the boss eventually that we're going to be running into. Some kind of redneck looking mechanic, I guess. I don't know why that's <laughs> who they had to go with when they were designing this guy. But it is pretty funny. And we're gonna see a big old stream of probably some nasty, nasty sewer water. I don't know what kind of words I'm inventing today. Uh, the sewer water is gonna spray Luigi, and that's really not gonna do anything for us whatsoever. <laughs> Nothing's gonna happen to us. Luigi can walk through that just fine, but Luigi cannot. So we're going to pull that rope, or not that rope, that like towel that was underneath this uh, pipe, and then we're gonna go through the pipe and pick up the key. So these pipes are kind of deceiving, and I think there's a gem if you go through one of them, but it doesn't really matter too much. So uh, Lu Luigi needs to drop down here for Luigi to be able to pick up the key. And once he has hold of the key, then he can go through the doorway. And I think one of the other reasons why I really don't like this level is that there's there's tons of enemies, but on top of that, when you come back through this place again in the future, whether it's for collectibles or other reasons, all of these rooms seem to respawn their enemies pretty frequently, so you can't really just walk from room to room and, you know, get through this stupid Boilerworks level really fast. You have to, like, walk through and then defeat another wave of enemies. And especially on the later levels, that does become a little bit tedious when you're just trying to get collectibles. I wish that when you, like, totally clear the floor, that most of the ghosts were pretty much gone for good, but there are achievements to, like, defeat a certain amount of a certain type of ghost, so maybe that's why they did that, I don't know. Anyway, we're going to come on down to this pipe, and we're going to have to control the flow of the water so Guiji can get through. And this can be a little bit sketchy, uh, so if you want to experiment with these pipes beforehand, go right ahead, or you can just follow what I'm doing. So we're going to pull this pipe down on the sort of the middle, that's the middle valve that I uh, closed, and then we're going to open up this other one, and actually keep that one closed, <laughs> is what I meant. And we're going to move Luigi, Guigi, all the way over to the left side, and then we're going to close this one, or open it up, I mean. We're going to open up that valve. Hopefully you guys can keep track of that better than my dang narration can. And then we're going to open up this valve, and that'll close another pipe. And then we should be able to move Guigi a little bit more forward. And if we open this one up, I don't think that does anything. Nope, but we need to open up the pipe all the way on the left. We'll probably close the pipe all the way on the left. Um... Right there, I should have lost Guiji, but there's a little tiny block with no water on it in between those two water streams. So somehow I managed to get lucky, and Guiji did not disappear there. I don't know how that happened, but uh, <laughs> apparently you can wait in the middle if you are really careful with your movements. So anyway, we'll finally close or open or whatever the heck we're doing. We're turning that pipe to the left, that valve. We're turning that valve to the left. And then we can make it over to the right side and flash it with our flashlight. That'll finally open up this doorway. This is probably the most annoying room in the boiler works, but it's not the most convoluted one that we'll be seeing. That is for sure. <laughs> okay, so then we're in this giant kind of, I don't know, sewage treatment plant. That's the only thing I can really think of calling this. I mean, what else would all this stuff be for? Unless this is really just to boil the water for all the heating in the entire hotel, I guess that could be it too. Uh, we can step over here and use the poltergust on that fan to move the platform in the middle. And there's going to be a ladder on the right side that we're not going to be able to use yet, but that will be a shortcut that will be available to us later, of course. Can't use it now. And we'll just want to move the platform so we can get to the ladder up in the center of the level here. And then we're going to want to open this gigantic vault door. After a cutscene, of course. Huh? 
Alright, I got a little ahead of myself on the vault door there, but we fell into the water and good old Polter Pup saved us. So we can't actually activate that ladder yet, I don't think. Um, I guess we'll find out in a second here, but I think the water has to be down for us to activate that shortcut. Okay, so we're just getting told that our device is mostly waterproof. And now we see our main goal in this level, and that is that giant switch in the background that we can see through the window. And Egad is telling us the obvious, we have to flip the switch, return the water, and get the ghost. So we're gonna head on through this door, and there's a gem in here, I think. I don't really think there's anything else of importance for us, so we're just gonna continue on. And now we're in the main kind of sewage walkway, or I don't know, it's the only other thing I can think of calling this sewers, right? <laughs> we're in the, the main sewer walkway of the level, and also probably the most finicky control that the whole game has. So if when we jump into this giant rubber duck, or any other kind of floating device, um, I'm pretty sure they're all rubber ducks, then we get to use the, the poltergust, or the whatever our vacuum cleaner is called officially. <laughs> you can't just said it and I already forgot, but anyway, we get to use that to control how we move in the water. So sucking the vacuum in will pull us toward things, and then using the one that bursts air outward will push us away. And since we're in water, it's all very floaty, and it can get very confusing. And at first, this first area, not a whole lot, is really able to um, stop us or really hinder us in any way. We're going to use Guiji to get up to the top there to open up the gate and then move into the second room. And if we kind of pull this one, we can use Guiji to... Uh, we can now allow Guiji to come on over to the right side with us, but I think you could do that without pulling that open. That was just a collectible if you want to go down there. And we can't send Guiji away yet. Uh, if you get rid of him right now, if the game even lets you, then you'll have to go to one of those platforms that we see kind of in the middle of the screen right now. We'll have to go there and spawn Guiji again and send him back on top so he can do all the stuff that we need him to. There was a mine that blew me up there and I just decided to eat that hit because it was more annoying than it was worth in my head to avoid the damage. And then we'll use Guiji again to open up the waterway in the right room. And we'll see some spikes at the end of this place and the water is slowly going to be dragging us to it. So this isn't really too big of a deal, we're technically on a timer. But we can just switch to Luigi and push ourselves away from the spikes if we are too close to them. Or we can just try to rush to the other end here with Guiji, and we're just going to go through all of the pipes until we are on the right side. And I think I switched over to Luigi just to give us a little bit more time, and then we can pull on this chain and that should open up the gate. And now we can switch back to Luigi and head on back through no problem. And then Guiji should be able to fit through that grating, no problem, or that fence, or whatever you want to call it. So we'll go through that pipe and he'll pop out on the other side. And I think... What do I do here? <laughs> this game is a little bit lengthy, so I forgot every single step that I took, but that's okay. Yes, we do go through that lower pipe and that'll bring us back down. And there's another pipe here we can go in, and then we can pull on this chain. And the water's gonna keep moving Luigi down to the left, so you may have to periodically switch to him just to kind of reset where he is. And then we can pull on this chain, and I think this is just collectible stuff. Yep, it's just coins, nothing vital is inside of there. So we'll go back into the pipe, and I'm gonna keep trying to keep Luigi on the same screen as me. And then we're gonna head on back to the top there with Luigi. And we're going to try to go to the left, if the controls want to let me. And then we'll just have to time this water pipe, it's not really too hard. Move to the left of those, and then try to move into the next screen with Luigi. And there's a heart that I finally managed to hit. And we will grab this chain, and that will open up a pipe for our friend on top. There's also a bag of gold for us, if you want to get some money. Or it says G, I'm assuming it means gold, even though it's got dollar bills, so don't know about that. <laughs> and then some more pipes here, so once the 
furthest one on the right goes away, then just run as fast as you can to the left. And we should be able to open up the spikes without any problems. And if you notice, Luigi wasn't moving while he's holding onto that chain. So you can kind of keep him there and not have to worry about him hitting the spikes. There's also going to be some shark ghosts that come in. And I think I avoid them for the most part. And I'm not actually sure how to defeat them. I, I'm sure I have defeated them, so I guess we'll see in a second here. But I, I don't really think it's easy to kill them on the stupid rubber duck. So I'm just going to avoid them. And we're going to head on into the next room and jump off the rubber duck. And then all the ghosts, all the ghost sharks are going to disappear. So I, I don't think we're actually supposed to defeat them in the rubber duck. Okay, so now we can work a little bit more toward getting the water levels lower. We're going to have another pipe puzzle because there's a big button on top there. And that's the button we need to get to. So hopefully I don't make too many mistakes here. I think we're going to be under attack by more ghosts first though. Yep, we get to see this guy again who is definitely my least favorite ghost in the game. And this time we can actually kind of see where they are because of the water. So you can see the sort of air bubbles that they make in the surface of the water and try to shock or try to stun wherever they, those bubbles are. And we found that first guy pretty easy and then we're going to have what looks like a lot of the smaller red ghosts. And we'll take those guys out. I don't really know what the point of those small ghosts are in this game because they don't really ever seem to do anything. And yeah, that was like four ghosts, so that was that battle. No problem whatsoever. Okay, so we will be turning the pipes here in the direction that we want Guiji to follow. So if we turn it right and then up, then we can send Guiji onto this upper platform. And we'll need to do that so we can turn this pipe upwards so we can get up to the button. And then if we come back down the pipe, we'll still have to switch to Luigi so we can move this right pipe down to the right. There we go. And then once we go back to our gooey friend, we can head on through the pipe up to the top and we should be put right next to the button. Yes, so now we're going to uh, throw a plunger on there and pull the plunger down. I think that plunger is behind the button. Is it going to work? Looks like nope, but that wasn't really going to work. Maybe it will? No, I don't think that was going to work. So <laughs> I'm going to reposition that plunger on the front side of the button. There we go. And now, once the game decides to let me pull on it, we can pull the button down and that will lower the water. Good job! Okay, now we need to head back to that giant vault door. Egad's gonna let us know what we have to do now. It's kind of funny because for the most part this game doesn't really tell you what you're supposed to do, but every now and then Egad gives you a heck of a lot of advice. Alright, so there was a golden ghost there that I spread, or that I sped up, and it was inside of the suit of armor. So I don't know if we've run into many of those, but there are a lot of golden ghosts in the levels in this game, and they... Um, give you a lot of money when you defeat him. That's about it. Nothing else is super special about him. And here we get to see all the shark ghosts, and I think for the most part I ignore them, or maybe I, yeah, it looks like I decided to defeat this guy, I guess. And I think we might just be able to ignore them. I'm not sure if there's a ghost prison gate over to our right side. Because I left, yeah, I left the third ghost alone, so yeah, whatever. We can just ignore them if we want to, but we need to head on back where we came. And this might be another reason why I really don't like this level too much. Like, there's tons of money here. There's all kinds of these destructible things that we now suddenly have access to. But this level is just so much backtracking that... I don't know, it kind of was... I, I just don't like it that much. <laughs> okay, then when we try to go through this doorway... And then once we go through this one... We are finally back where we started, and now we can lower down the shortcut, so we can use this uh, ladder to get back up there from now on, thank goodness. And then we can hit up the ladder in the middle. Then we will start sucking on that uh, handle on this vault door here to unlock it, and then push X to step inside. And I think I may have forgotten to push X here. Yes, you need to get close to it to see the X showing up. There we go.
Now we do a battle of rubber duckies, and I think I cut out a heck of a lot of failures that I had right there because this guy is one pretty annoying boss, and I have 14 health. He's got like a fan, and he will attack you with it and start spinning in a circle. And once he starts spinning when he's dazed, you're going to suck up his rubber ducky and throw him into the spikes. But it's pretty darn easy for you to get tossed into, into the spikes. And when that happens, you'll spawn up here on this ridge or this outer upper circle part. And you will blow up a new rubber duck and then jump back into the water. And that is exactly what happened to me a whole lot of times because this guy really is just a very annoying boss. So he's got, I think, I don't know how much health he started with. He has 247 health now, and there's going to be some mines that will be inside of the water. And our rubber duck was still intact, so we just had to jump back into it. Now he's going to swing at us a few more times before he starts spinning, and we need to wait for him to get dazed, like right there. And we'll pick him up and throw him into the spikes again, then head on back out as soon as you can, just so you don't waste any time getting to him. Those rats that run around tend to drop hearts, so defeat those if you need them. And then we'll just suck him up as much as we can before we throw him around a little bit. And I think we're going to have to do one more phase. This seems like a three-phase boss. He's at 76 health now, so definitely just one more. And he's going to go to the other side of the arena, jump into the water again. And these mines are pretty hard to avoid. Sometimes you may just have to accept you're going to get hit by them. And right there, you can kind of move him around and manipulate him, but I'm kind of stuck between the spike and him and a mine there. There wasn't a whole lot I could do, so <laughs> I got knocked out. We're going to just blow up another rubber duck and then jump inside. And we can walk around with the rubber duck here to put it in a better spot if we're not in a good place. And we're going to try just to stay somewhat near the spikes, but not close enough that they'll hit us. And that one I was unfortunately too close to. This really, the water controls are just very awkward. <laughs> it might look easier in the video. I don't know if you play it though, you'll probably know what I mean. It's just a very odd level. And I'm gonna avoid that mine. And he's gonna have to swing at us twice there. And that time he started spinning way away from us. Thank goodness, so he's dazed yet again. And we can finally pop his rubber duck a third time and suck him up and then finish him off. Well, a button fell into the pool of water, but I'm not really sure why Luigi was disappointed, because that's an easy fix. We're going to plunger the button and pull it down. And once that water has drained, we can climb on down the ladder. And then finally pick up the button. So as usual, once we get the button, we are pretty much done with this level. And that means we're just going to head on back to the elevator and continue on with the next video. Oh! 